Mayor Allen, uh, you may proceed to start the meeting once you're ready. Thank you. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. <clears throat> Due to COVID-19, councils taking the necessary steps to limit in-person meetings. As such, members of councils are participating in the meeting electronically. The meeting is live streamed and residents are provided with the following options to watch or listen to the council meeting. You can watch it by uh, online at www.springwater.ca forward slash live. You can listen to the meeting live from a telephone uh, calling 647-558-0588 and use the meeting ID 854-3393. 9813 and then the pound sign. This option is available during the meeting. Those who can't do either of the above can review the meeting at your convenience by watching the video on the Township's YouTube channel, which is on the website. Can I have a mover and seconder call the public meeting to order? Councillor Ma and Councillor Ritchie that this public meeting of council held under section 34 of the planning act for application zb 220-10 by c phillips on behalf of 1061031 ontario limited and zb 220-11 by j and k rogers on behalf of w ellerbrunn be called to order at 6 31 p.m all those in favor Um, Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Um, sorry, Mayor Allen, and, and just to you, it looks like Clerk Ainsworth was trying to add to the conversation there. Yes, um, I probably she's probably going to tell me I failed to uh, ask about pecuniary interest. Is that uh, Clerk Ainsworth? Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, actually, I was going to remind you to open the special meeting. Uh, prior to opening the public meeting portion, uh, but yes, also disclosures of pecuniary interest. Does anybody have a pecuniary interest to declare? Okay. <clears throat> so at 3.1, we'll move her in a second here to open the, um, uh, well, I did read off that recommendation, Clerk Ainsworth. So what are you referring to, please? Uh, thank you, just item one, uh, 1. 1.1 to open the meeting, the special meeting prior to the public meeting portion. Okay, move in a seconder of the special meeting of the Council of the Township of Springwater, October 26, 220, come to order at 6.32 p.m. Councillor Cabral, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, all those in favor? That is carried. Okay, mover and seconder uh, for 3.1, please. Cards up, Councillor Moore, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, that the public meeting of council held under section 34 and 39 of the Planning Act RSO 1990 P13 as amended for applications, zoning bylaw amendment application ZB 220 10 by Celeste Phillips of Celeste Phillips Planning on behalf of 106. 1031 Ontario Limited and Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application ZB 220 11 by W. Ellerbrunn on behalf of JNK Rogers be called to order at 6 33 p.m. All those in favor? That is carried. Welcome to this public meeting of Springwater Township Council held in compliance with Section 34 of the Planning Act to give the public an opportunity to express their views in regard to proposed amendments of the Township of Springwater Zoning Bylaw 5000 as amended. First part of this meeting is to present the amendments. Following the public, following, the public will be given an opportunity to make an oral submission through the Zoom application. Any person wishing to make an oral submission must have notified the Township prior to 8.30 a.m. this morning and must have been added to the common commenters list. If a person or a public body who files an appeal of a decision of the Township of Springwater in respect of a proposed zoning bylaw amendment does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or written submissions to the Township of Springwater before the proposed zoning bylaw amendments are passed, 
the local planning appeal tribunal may dismiss all or part of the appeal. All comments or questions should be addressed through the chair. Oral submissions will be included in this meeting's minutes and form a part of the public record, including the name and address of the speaker as information collected under the Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. The minutes of the meeting will be posted on the township's website. So we start with ZB 220-10 by C. Phillips, Celeste Phillips, on behalf of 1061-031 Ontario Limited at 2145 Floss Road 4 East. I'll now call, on, call upon the clerk to confirm notice of this meeting and the dates on which notice was given. Notice of this public meeting was mailed on the 5th day of October 2020 to the owner of the subject lands and to the assessed owners of 18 properties in the township of Springwater within 240 meters of the area to which the proposed amendment would apply and to all persons and public bodies as prescribed under the Planning Act and its regulations. Notice was also posted at the assessed property to which the proposed amendment applies at a location that was visible from Floss Road 4 East. The notice was also placed on the township website. Has the planning department received any correspondence in response to the notice of the public meeting? Correspondence has been received from the township of Springwater, CAO on behalf of the finance department in an email dated September 21st, 2020. From the municipal uh, planning analyst of Enbridge Gas Inc in an email dated September 22nd, 2020. From a senior planner from the Simcoe Muskoka Catholic District School Board in an email dated October 8th, 2020. And from the Severn Sound Environmental Association in a letter dated October 21st, 2020. And all comments can be found on the agenda packet. I now call on Celeste Phillips of Celeste Phillips Planning to give a brief explanation of the purpose and effect of the proposal. Council members and the public can follow along with the presentation, which has been included in the agenda. Good evening, Mayor Allen, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, members of council, staff and the public. Are you able to hear me okay and see the screen that I'm showing you? Yes, thank you. Great, thank you. So I am Celeste Phillips. I'm a land use planning consultant. I'm here this evening on behalf of the owners of 2145 Floss Road 4 East. As you've indicated, it is a numbered company, 1061031 Ontario Limited, operating as Western Mechanical Electrical Millwright Services Limited. Um, as part of this virtual meeting today, there are a number of representatives on this call from Western Mechanical. If you should have any specific uh, questions that I'm not able to answer for you. The property uh, we're speaking about this evening is about 109 acres in size. It's located in Hillsdale. It is currently vacant land. Uh, the roads uh, in the vicinity, of course, Floss Road Forest, East runs across the north side of the property. Highway 93 or Penetanguishene runs down the east side of the property. And of course, this property is close to the 400 interchange. The lands are currently designated business park and environmental protection in your official plan. And there is no official plan amendment required in order to proceed with the, uh, the rezoning that is before you this evening. These are a couple of site photos taken from Floss Road 4 East. Uh, the township and the Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority entered into an agreement with the owners of this property to allow for some preliminary grading of the property to take place. And in these photos, you will see the earthen berms that have been constructed alongside uh, Floss Road 4 East. Uh, so as I mentioned, the property is about 109 acres. It is designated business park and two uh, environmental protection categories. The uh, owners wish to rezone the lands to allow for the expansion of Western Mechanical Electrical Millwright Services into the township of Springwater. 
And there's also land available on the same property for a second industrial use. So the rezoning that's being requested is to rezone the lands from the agricultural zone to general industrial outside storage exception zone. And there are two exceptions that are being uh, requested to that zone standard, which I'll, I'll uh, detail for you shortly. This is the uh, proposed site development plan. Again, along the top of the slide is Floss Road 4 East. Along the east side is Highway 93. A Western Mechanical is proposing to develop a 46,000 square foot building on the eastern part of the property to expand their services into the municipality. There is room on the west side of the property for an additional industrial building. Uh, it could accommodate um, a building of um, uh, 165,000 square feet. There are four access points shown on the proposed development plan, two to access the westerly building, and then two to access the Western Mechanical Building. There is on this slide, uh, two stormwater management ponds shown at the rear of the property, but those may be combined into one single stormwater management facility. And also indicated on this proposed development plan are the berms that I've indicated alongside Floss Road 4 East. There are two exceptions that are being requested, as I mentioned. Um, the first relates to outdoor storage. Uh, the township's bylaw does not permit outdoor storage in the front yard. And because of the positioning of Western Mechanicals building, these two storage areas lie partially in front of the main front wall of the proposed building, which means they're in the front yard. So the request is to allow outdoor storage in the front yard, but as mentioned, that area would be shielded by the, um, the construction of these uh, earthen berms. The second exception that's being requested relates to parking standards. The, um, the current standard that the township has is one parking space for every 40 square meters of industrial space, which in this case would mean that the Western Mechanical Building would require 105 parking spaces, when in fact their requirements are between 20 and 25 parking spaces. So the request this evening is to um, have your staff and you as council consider uh, reduced parking standards for, for this property in its entirety and specifically for Western Mechanical and also for the proposed building, um, the end user, which is uh, not known at this time. There were about uh, seven or eight uh, documents that were submitted as part of the application. Uh, these are technical reports uh, that support the rezoning request. They include archeology, span environmental impact, tree preservation, hydrogeology, stormwater management, site grading, traffic impact, soil study, and uh, planning justification report. And all of these technical reports are available for review by contacting the township's planning department. The proposed rezoning uh, from the agricultural zone to the general industrial outside storage exception zone conforms to the provincial planning policies set out in the provincial policy statement and the growth plan for the greater Golden Horseshoe. And the proposed rezoning also conforms to the two official plans, the County of Simcoe official plan and the township's official plan. The next slide is an extract from the Hillsdale secondary plan. The property is identified in blue on this slide. And you can see that the central part of this property where the two buildings are proposed, uh, that section of the property is designated in your township official plan as business park and permits the proposed uses. The outer edges of the, the property, both the west side and the east side, are currently designated in two different environmental categories. And there is no change being proposed to these land use designations. This is an air photo of the subject property. Again, Floss Road is located in this location. If you can see my cursor, Highway 93 down the right hand side of the slide. To the north of the property is the Brampton Brick Operation. To the west are woodlands and agricultural lands. 
to the south, also woodlands and agricultural lands. And then on the east side is Highway 93. And you can see in this slide that the central portion of the property is proposed for development. The west side, the wooded area and the east side containing wetlands and woodlands would be, uh, would remain in an environmental protection category. This is a slide showing the existing zoning of the property. Uh, for the most part, the property still retains an agricultural zone with some environmental protection in the southeast part of the property. And this is the proposed zoning of the property. So again, the central portion of the request is for that industrial designation or industrial zone that I've mentioned with exceptions. And then the outside edges of the property would be rezoned from the agricultural zone to the environmental protection zone. And before I turn it back to you, Mayor Allen, I'll uh, conclude by saying that this is a good news story for the municipality in that uh, an operation such as uh, Western Mechanical Successful Business wishes to expand its operations into your municipality on lands that are designated for the proposed development. And I'd be happy to assist with any questions if you wish to direct them my way. Thank you. Mayor Allen, I believe you are muted. <clears throat> Thank you. I certainly concur with that, um, Ms. Phillips. We'll now call upon the moderator to provide the number of people who have registered to ask questions or make comments regarding this application. Thank you, Mayor Allen. There are no commenters registered to make an oral submission in regards to this application. Thank you. Do any members of council have questions or comments regarding this application? Councillor Hanna? Thank you, Mayor. My, my question is the uh, storage that would take place in front of the building. Um, is that just uh, equipment, machinery equipment, or would it be items that maybe have been removed as through their industrial insulation projects and stored there? Ms. Phillips? Um, my understanding, um, and I, I'm going to defer this question to Western Mechanical, but my understanding is that what is being stored in the front of the building uh, is being stored in that particular location because there needs to be eyes on that particular part of the business. So maybe if I could just ask a representative from Western Mechanical to respond uh, more clearly than I have. It's Thank Joe you. Gibbons from Western. It'll be Western trailers and Western equipment. It won't be any outside equipment that's been removed from customers, or something like that. It'd be all our own equipment. Thank you. Or, or tra trucks and trailers that move our equipment. Okay. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Councillor Cabral? Thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, my, I guess with respect to the berm out front there that is going to be uh, put in place, what would be the, uh, the height of the burn, berm in, in general across its, uh, its extent? Uh, Brian, could you answer that question? Brian Smith, I know that uh, you've been involved in the construction of that berm. It will vary between uh, four and five meters. The berm is there now. If you want to have a look at it, it'll give you a good idea uh, what it's going to be like in the finish. Okay. It's currently about, if you look at it, it's about four or five meters above the current road level. So it'd be hard to see anything from the, from the road and on the property. The comments? Okay, thank you to all who participated in the public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment and for showing interest in this matter. And thank you to the representatives from uh, Western Mechanical and uh, Barry Welding for attending. The next is ZB 220-11 by J and K Rogers on behalf of W Ellerbrunn at 11 Robert Boulevard. 
I will now call upon the clerk to confirm notice of this meeting and the dates on which notice was given. Notice of this public meeting was mailed on the 5th day of October 2020 to the owner of the subject lands and to the assessed owners of 38 properties in the township of Springwater within 120 meters of the area to which the proposed amendment would apply and to all persons and public bodies as prescribed under the Planning Act and its regulations. Notice was also posted at the assessed property to which the proposed amendment applies at a location that was visible from Robert Boulevard. The notice was also placed on the township website. Has the planning department received any correspondence in response to the notice of public meeting? Correspondence has been received from the Ministry of Transportation in an email dated October 5th, 2020. From the Simcoe Muskoka District, my apologies, the Simcoe Muskoka Catholic District School Board in an email dated October 8th, 2020 from Cullen and Jordan Lacroix from 13 Robert Boulevard in Hillsdale in an email dated October 19th, 2020, from Sharon and Laurie Hutchinson of 10 Albert Street West in Hillsdale in an email dated October 23rd, 2020, and from Brett Kinsley of 5 Robert Boulevard, Hillsdale in, an, in a letter dated October 26, 2020. Thank you. I'll now call upon planner Deborah Ann List to give a brief explanation of the purpose and effect of the proposal. Council members and the public can follow along with the presentation which has been included on the agenda. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay. A zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, ZB 202011 Rogers is a site specific rezoning for to permit an accessory living accommodation in a detached structure on the subject land, as well as an increase in the permitted uh, floor area of an accessory building from um, 65 square meters to 89.18 square meters. I'm just going to go to the next slide now, hopefully. Uh, the subject lands are located at 11 Robert Boulevard in the settlement area of Hillsdale. They're zoned residential one and designated urban residential. Um, again, the purpose of this application would be a site specific rezoning uh, to rezone the lands from the residential one zone to a residential exception zone that would permit that accessory living accommodation uh, within a detached building and to recognize that increase of floor area. The next slide here just shows uh, a site plan um, driven, uh, drawn by the applicant, which shows the location of the secondary suite, um, which is beside uh, the primary dwelling. Um, also on the site plan, you'll see that the septic system, um, where the location is for the, the main dwelling, as well as the proposed uh, system for the secondary suite. Um, the suite will be serviced privately um, and would be hooked up to municipal water Water, there's water in Hillsdale. The next slide is just a concept drawing uh, submitted by the applicant, uh, just a concept of the proposed secondary suite as well as the layout of the structure. Um, that concludes my formal presentation for tonight. Uh, the applicants are also available online to answer any questions. I will say that there is no recommendation report tonight uh, to address um, some of the comments that came out um, from the public. Um, the recommendation report will follow at a later council meeting um, once the applicant has a chance to respond uh, to the comments that have been submitted. Um, there's been a number of comments that were even submitted um, just before the meeting tonight at the end of the day. Um, some of the concerns, I'll just summarize them so council is aware. All of them will be submitted to you um, so you can get the actual receipt of the letters. Um, some of the concerns uh, regarding, were regarding the size of the unit, um, servicing with a private septic system, um, setbacks to property lines, uh, the placement of the windows and doors on the accessory structure. Um, there was also some drainage concerns um, that came out of the comments. Um, a uh, question on the future severance of the property, and then a few comments on the drafted bylaw 
And I will reiterate, reiterate, there's no decision tonight. Tonight is just to gather all of the comments from public and the council, and we will be bringing forth a recommendation report at a later date once the applicant has the opportunity to address any questions and concerns. So I think I now will pass it over to uh, the Rogers and they can address any more um, or add anything else that I've missed from the presentation. Thank you. Hi there. So this is Jennifer Rogers speaking. Hi, Mayor Allen. Hi, everybody. Thank you for listening to our uh, proposal. Um, I just, I guess the only thing I wanted to add to it is, and I, I, I believe you already have this information, is the reason for us looking to add this secondary suite is for the purpose of my parents, who are um, elderly and at point of retirement and are requiring some affordable housing. So we're looking at only having this space for them. Um, but the the reason I think we want to, I'd like to just speak about the size is that does seem to be a common sort of um, concern that we've, we've heard is that uh, my father is not uh, well and he is uh, very near needing to be in a wheelchair. And so we need uh, the space that would accommodate the fact that he would be in a in in a, a chair and need the room to be moving around um, the unit with that. So with his um, failing health, um, it's giving us an opportunity to care for him and to not have to look at any alternative care homes for my parents. Um, and then again, given that my dad's um, health concerns, we are um, looking at sort of his own bedroom. So this is why the, the unit's bigger, is we're looking for two two bedroom uh, unit so that my parents each have their own space, which is required. Um, and I know it was just mentioned in passing about the windows and doors. I think there might be some misinformation from the public. I think they were uh, making a presumption that we're facing the main part of the house toward a neighbor and that's not the case. We're looking at facing the main entrance and all of the windows to the unit toward our own house at 11 Robert. And so facing the neighbor would only be a small kitchen window and a fire exit, which is required to, uh, to be there. Um, and with respect to drainage, I guess, I don't know, my thought on that subject is, this is a modular home that we are proposing, which sits on a um, cement slab, which is level with the, the property and then sits on top of uh, blocks on that. So with respect to water drainage, um, the water would be flowing as it is now, as we're not disrupting, um, we're not disrupting the land as it is, we're just placing a cement block on top of it. And so water is actually free to flow under the cement slab, as well as through the slabs that it sits on, or the, the blocks that the house sits on. So that would be my thought. And with respect to a separate septic, um, I've been told by the township that that is a requirement and not within our control, um, that we may not um, tap into our own septic system, that we must um, explore a second system. Um, and we have a local uh, company that's uh, also confirmed that uh, with the SB um, who is, is willing to do both unit, uh, septic systems, sorry. I feel like that's all I wanted to put out there. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Rogers. Uh, we will move on to the moderator. Um, moderator, can you please provide the number of people who've registered to ask questions or make comments regarding this application? Thank you, Mayor Allen. There were three residents registered to make an oral submission in regards to this application. Okay. However, Donna Ronald at 6 Robert Boulevard um, does not appear to be in attendance. So I will move on to the next commenter. The next commenter would be Angela Holm on behalf of owner at 9 Robert Boulevard. Angela, go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. Um, thank you for, for hearing me out. I, I did submit an email, but I probably missed the deadline this, uh, it, as I didn't send it. Uh, it was around 10 o'clock this morning. Um, 
I have a few concerns. I'm acting on behalf of my mother as I'm her legal POA, who and she resides at Nine Robert. Um, we're concerned with the the size of of the the proposed unit. Um, I think we're setting a precedent here when when we're uh, passing something over and above what is regulated. Um, I'm concerned with the topography. I don't know if many of you have been down. Robert Boulevard, but the 11 Robert is quite a bit higher than 9 Robert, and the property flows towards Sturgeon River, towards the highway. Um, the proposed unit would be considerably higher than 9 Robert. The um, front corner is seven feet from the property line. So this is going to be a looming building that that is completely blocking the the west side of of, of the property. Um, I'm and again, runoff is certainly a, a consideration with the pro, nine Robert being lower than eleven. It, when you put a structure on property, you're eliminating green space, you're eliminating absorption of, of runoff water. So I can almost guarantee that the garage next to 11 is going to have flooding. The, the, the runoff from the roof alone will, be, will fall on 9 Robert. Um, Uh, just uh, the proposed septic filter bed at the front of the property slope also slopes towards the road. I, I don't. I'm not a septic expert, but I know that anywhere I've ever seen a septic bed, they've had to be flat. So again, there's concerns with runoff with with the septic as well. And I, I think with the size, the location of the proposed suite that it's going to affect the property value at 9 Robert Boulevard. We don't live in Barrie. We live in Hillsdale. We bought in Hillsdale because of the size of the lots, because of the green space. Essentially, they're proposing two houses on one lot. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's sort of the... the the, the bases, uh, and as I say, I, I have sent an email, so it is there in writing as well. Okay, um, thank you, Ms. Holm. Um, before I turn it to council to ask any questions or make any comments, uh, planner list, any comment with respect to what Ms. Holm has brought up, or we're taking all the information in, as you said at the outset, and uh, we'll be uh, analyzing the, uh, the issues brought up. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Just a quick comment on the, the drainage, the septic system. Um, the township's planning department has circulated the, our engineers as well as the building department for comment on those aspects. And again, as you mentioned, all of these comments will be addressed in any recommendation report moving forward. Thank you. Okay, open it up to council for any comments with respect to this. Uh, Councillor Hanna. Well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, through you to the planner. It's my understanding that there are regulations prohibiting water from one property being drained onto another property. I just like confirmation that that is uh, correct. I know this. Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen, to Councillor Hanna. Um, I believe that's correct. Um, I would have to ref defer that question to the building department, who actually deals with that engineering side um, through the building permit. But uh, it's my understanding, yeah, no drainage. You can't drain onto another property. And that would all be looked at at your building permit stage. Thank you. Other comments? Councillor Cabral. Thank you, Mayor Allen. I'm uh, just curious, uh, directing this to uh, Planner Lisk. A um, couple of questions. Uh, number one, with respect to the uh, uh, size, um, it works out to about a 37% increase above, uh, I guess, what's normally would be considered permissible. Is that for uh, uh, ground coverage or is that specifically speaking to the size of the building? 
I know this. Thank you, Mayor Allen, to Councillor Carell. Um, that's the, the total floor area. So it would be taken from the exterior walls of the proposed building, and it would include all accessory structures on the property. So if there's any other sheds or um, anything like that, you would include that as well. Okay. So uh, it'd be fair to say that when they add that, they're over by 37%. Uh, for the coverage. Um, so I, I kind of get that. The other one is, um, uh, is I noticed that it lines up with the front of the existing structure. And I'm just curious to know whether or not, uh, from your standpoint, uh, um, relocating it further to the backyard uh, might uh, alleviate a few of the concerns. I don't know if it would alleviate all of them, but would that be a consideration for the planning department to look at something like that as a recommendation? Yeah. I um, thank you. Um, just a, one quick comment on the coverage. Um, coverage and floor area of an accessory structure are two separate um, zoning standards. So this one, we're only looking at that, the floor area. Um, coverage for this property is maxed at 35%. And that's the total coverage that you can, you can um, cover with any buildings or structures on that property. In this case, the, um, the applicants have confirmed that they do meet that 35%. It's just the, the floor area of this structure. Um, and so just to comment on the placement of the structure, um, I think I would have to uh, defer this question to the applicants. I know um, they looked at different scenarios uh, when putting this proposal together. And I believe the, the biggest um, question was the septic system and the setbacks that are required uh, to meet um, from the, the nearest piping in the in the septic system, which is, I believe is five meters, um, you know, creating an issue with putting it at the back of the property, but I will have the applicants, mm -hmm. if they're still available, um, add to the location choice. Ms. Ms. Rogers. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Mayor Allen. Um, we are open to suggestion. Um, we just wanted to have it from the, um, in line with our house and back, um, which that was the proposal we put in. There is some uh, room because we need to move our septic into our backyard. So there is some room for us to move the proposed secondary suite uh, back further. Yes, that's an option. Okay, um, Councillor Ritchie. You're muted, uh, Councillor Ritchie. Hello. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is to uh, to the planner. Um, are they going to be doing a lot grading plan on the subject property? Planner list. Thank you. Uh, the building department would determine that. Um, at this point, I have not received comments from the building department, but as mentioned, I have circulated. Um, and if a lot grading plan is required, I will let obviously the applicant know, and my recommendation report would include that information. Um, but um, I would say it's likely, but I'd let the building department determine that. Okay. Um, follow on, Councillor Ritchie. I, I just want to comment. I think from the concerns that I'm having from some of the people here tonight, I think if a lock grading plan was done, I think it would uh, 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 solve the concerns of some of the neighbors there as far as, uh, as, far as water, as far as grading. Um, all, all this stuff, and that would all be taken into consideration and dealt with uh, through the lot grading plan. So uh, that'd be that'd be one avenue that they could do. Um, okay. I know it's I know it's money, but uh, it, it would uh, solve a lot of concerns. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Ma. Thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, a question would be, I, I would imagine the house would have to be built with accessibility. Would that be in consideration of, um, I guess, the square footage of the, of the property? And what about parking? Is the property big enough for more parking with a second unit? I'll go to plan our list first. Thank you. Um, the, the applicants are required to show uh, two parking spaces on the property, two for the unit, as well as two um, for the primary dwelling on the property. Um, so I believe the parking is there. Um, I will confirm when I look at the site plan, but the driveway um, 
And I believe there's also an attached garage on the existing dwelling. So they would need to show two parking spaces as a residential use. Um, with regards to accessibility, um, any ramps or decks would not be included in the floor area, um, but they would be included in required setbacks. So all of the setbacks would still have to be met, um, as well as the lot coverage, um, the maximum 35% of lot coverage. And I believe the applicant um, has provided that calculation in one of the their submission materials showing that uh, all, all the decks or accessibility measures would still fall under that 35% maximum. Okay, we have another resident, Ms. Suzanne McMaster, uh, who has, uh, would like to make an oral submission. So uh, I turn it over to Suzanne McMaster from 61 Davenport Drive, Hillsdale, uh, to, uh, to address uh, council, please. Thank you. Um, I think our biggest concern, a few of our neighbors have, have talked about uh, um, this extra nanny unit being added. Um, one is that road is quite busy as it is and uh, a few people on the road do park on, on the road, um, causing it hard to get around the cars. So my concern is having two more vehicles, are they really gonna be parked in the driveway or are they gonna be parked on the road as well? Another concern is why does it have to be a single dwelling? Um, I think overall people would prefer uh, an addition to the house to make it still look um, like a, a, you know, a, a norm, like it's been added to the house rather than having uh, an eyesore of a single dwelling on uh, blocks put on the property beside it. So um, I think that's our main concern. Um, it, it would it would be better. Uh, we're not disagreeing with with additions of housing, but not um, single dwellings. I'm afraid that this is going to start something, and then all of a sudden, other people in the area are going to be popping up with all these uh, single dwelling housing that just to me doesn't look right. And I agree with um, uh, Mrs. Holmes, who had uh, initially talked and said that it's 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 not Barry. It's not a city. We moved up here to have a little bit more land and, and enjoy scenery and not have it um, taken away by additional buildings going up. Thank okay, you. Okay, I'll go to planner list first and then uh, council, any further comments? Uh, thank you, Mayor Allen. Uh, just a comment on the parking. Uh, as mentioned, the applicant will be required to show two parking spaces for each dwelling unit. Um, and I think uh, with regard to the, the question about the addition in that, I'd have to defer that question to the applicants. I know they, they looked at all the different options um, and this was the scenario that they put forth. Um, so if they have anything else to add, I would have to turn it over to them. Ms. Rogers. Can you hear? Are you, are you able to hear me? Sorry. Yes. Yes. We okay. Can. Thank you. Um, so I guess my only comment would be that um, we've chosen um, something that is quite appealing to look at. Um, we are going to go with neutral colors to kind of match and blend in with with the community as it is. Um, and there's all kinds of finishes like skirting, for example. You're not actually seeing the bricks that it's sitting upon. You there's skirting and finishes to make it look like it belongs. Um, and I guess I just want to say that there's other units that have come into our community, these nanny uh, suites or secondary suites that uh, blend in very nicely. Um, and I know have um, high end finishes and compliments from the neighborhood. So um, it's not far uh, outside of what's already happening in Hillsdale that we're requesting. Okay, uh, Councillor Cabral, you had uh, yes. Thank you, Marilyn. Um, through to uh, Planner Lisk, um, would it be uh, would you be able to confirm uh, this is not a secondary garden street a suite with a term on it? Um, this is uh, under, I guess, the new provincial guidelines that they're applying under for a permanent structure. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page, and I, I wouldn't mind it if you might be able to reiterate um, the provincial policy now towards these accessory buildings and why. Um, why we're kind of permitting them. I know this. Thank you, Marilyn, to Councillor Cabral. 
Um, good question. Um, definitely this, this application is for a permanent suite. It's not a, a temporary garden suite that would be done through a temporary use bylaw. Um, it is a permanent structure and the applicants have decided to put forth this application for a permanent structure. All options were presented to them. Um, the garden suite being the temporary was also an option for them. Um, with regards to provincial policy, as you're, I'm sure you're all aware, um, the township is going to be undertaking an official plan amendment and rezoning uh, to look at these policies for additional residential units. Um, that's what the province has labeled them now. Uh, under provincial policies recently, uh, these units are permitted in, within the dwelling as well as within detached structures to help increase affordable housing in the province of Ontario. So this is not uh, just city led, this is throughout the whole province of Ontario, we're seeing these policy changes. Um, the province has, has updated their documents and um, it's now the township's opportunity to update theirs and that's where we're at right now. So, and with regards to a few questions about other units we've done in the township of Springwater, um, Secondary suites, we've seen a number of them come through over the last five years. The majority of those units were within the dwelling. Um, we've done a few in detached buildings, and this being, um, I think, the third or fourth one that we have we have looked at. Um, I think that concludes my comments. If you have any more questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor Condon. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. And uh, just through you to plan our list, uh, the, the changes or the recent changes that we speak to um, in, in conversation with planning earlier, changes were instituted in, in 2012, I believe. I mean, we are bring water where I guess we're kind of playing catch up. This is this is this is not new provincially. It, it may feel new to us in our communities, uh, but this is an initiative that is being um, supported by the province and supported by our our communities. Um, and then secondly, if you could just elaborate for me on the septic, you had spoke to that there is a requirement, a requirement for two separate septics, or was that, would there be an option to um, put in one larger septic for both, or is it because it's second, uh, completely separate amenity? And the list. Thank you, Mayor Allen, to Deputy Mayor Coughlin. Um, yes, you're correct uh, in saying that 2012 was when the changes started at the province to um, help uh, municipalities support and permit these types of units. Um, most recently, they've changed, just tweaked the policies to uh, re remove more barriers for these types of units. Um, so that's what I mean, recent changes, that's what I'm referring to. But 2012 was the, really the start. Um, with regards to the septic system, um, the building department, I know, I know the applicants had uh, spoken to the building department uh, regarding their scenarios. Um, it may have been based out of discussions with them that the two systems may have been an easier option. Um, I, I do, I'm not a septic expert and I, I do send them to the building side to, to deal with that. And I think that was what um, was resulted out of that. And you know, every every septic system requires a septic permit from the building department. So, you know, if what they're proposing isn't going to meet um, the yeah, building code and not be able to be approved, then they'll have to meet um, whatever scenario that the building department would approve. Thank you. Uh, follow on. Yes, thank you. And and just uh, the reason for the question was, I believe I heard Miss Rogers say that she was moving her septic for the actual like their their home so i was thinking if they have to move one i was just curious about that so that was the reason for the question thank you for the answer i just wonder uh, we talked about before the possibility of shifting the uh secondary suite further towards the backyard i see by the drawing there's 36 feet from the uh to to potentially play with there and moving it back would put it would put it, uh, would shield it from the neighbor's garage by the looks of it. And as the property expands, there's more space in the back widthwise. And I wonder by doing that, whether there'd be the possibility of joining the septics uh, into one, but uh, I'm not an expert either, but uh, uh, I think, you know, subject to the, the grading and the drainage, 
I think an idea might be to consider moving it back considerably to uh, uh, to the greater width of the property and uh, and see whether that would be workable. Okay, um, but as planner Liz said, uh, all of these comments we appreciate and they'll be taken into consideration for a follow up report. Uh, thank you to all that participated in this public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning amendment and for showing an interest in this matter. Clerk Ainsworth. Uh, thank you. I believe Mrs. McMasters would um, would like to provide additional comments on the on the file. Okay, uh, Ms. McMaster. Uh, yes, thank you. I just have one question with regards to um, renting it out. Um, say, Mrs. Uh, Rogers, I believe it is um, her parents. Um, get to the point where they have to go into retirement homes to have um, uh, full care. Um, what is the, the legal right in now renting out that suite? Um, because I really don't want uh, low income housing and these little nanny suites popping up all in our community because that is really gonna depreciate my value of my house. So I just wanna know on renting these units, uh, what, is the, what is the laws? Planner Lisk. Uh, through you, Mayor Allen, to Suzanne McMaster. Um, the township does not have any regulations regarding rentals or short-term rentals at this time. Um, should we have anything in the future, then um, the unit would have to comply with any regulations. Um, I don't know if anybody else online wants to speak to that uh, regarding licensing or rentals, but yeah, not at this time. Um, thank you. Okay, we'll certainly register uh, Ms. McMaster that, that concern and uh, take that into consideration as well. And, and uh, did you have any other uh, point to make Ms. McMaster, McMaster? No, thank you, that's it, thank you. Okay, so thank you to all who participated in this. Uh, can I have a mover and seconder to adjourn this public meeting? Councillor Ma, Councillor Moore, <clears throat> that this public meeting of council held under section 34 of the Planning Act for application ZB 220-10 by C. Phillips on behalf of 1061031 Ontario Limited and ZB 220-11 by J. and K. Rogers on behalf of uh, W. Ellerbrunn does now adjourn at 7.22 p.m. All those in favor? It's carried. Okay. Uh, direction following the public meeting. Can I have a mover and a seconder for the recommendation, please? Councillor Cabral, Councillor Moore. The council, having held a public meeting in accordance with section 34 and 39 of the Planning Act, RSO 1990. P13 is amended on zoning bylaw amendment application ZB 220-10 by Celeste Phillips of Celeste Phillips Planning on behalf of 1061031 Ontario Limited, having noted correspondence and input received, direct that the application be referred back to staff. All those in favor? Oh, question, Councillor Ritchie. Oh, you're putting, oh, okay, that was in favor. That is carried, thank you. Next at 4.2, uh, with respect to 220-11, J&K Rogers, 11 Robert Boulevard, mover and seconder for that recommendation, please. Councillor Moore, uh, Councillor Ma, the council having held a public meeting in accordance with section 34 and 39 of the Planning Act, RSO 1990 P13 is amended on a zoning bylaw amendment application ZB 220-11 by W. Ellibrun on behalf of J and K Rogers, having noted correspondence and input <coughs> received direct that the application be referred back to staff. All those in favor? That is carried. Mover and seconder uh, for the action reports, please. Deputy Mayor Coughlin, Councillor Moore, that the report from the planner regarding SB 220 dash 003, 003 how dated October 26, 
220 be received and that the mayor and clerk execute the necessary agreement once all technical aspects are addressed to the satisfaction of township solicitor and staff. All those in favor? That is carried. Next is 5.2 ZB 220-7, Frankham. Mover and seconder for this, please. Councillor Ma, Deputy Mayor Coughlin, that the report from the planner regarding ZB 220-7, Frankham, dated October 26, 220 be received and that bylaw 5000-319 be presented to council for consideration approval on October 26, 220. All those in favor? And it is carried. Moving on to bylaws, item 6.1, mover and seconder for the bylaws listed herein. Councillor Moore, Councillor Cabral, that the bylaw listed herein be signed and sealed by the mayor and clerk. That's 5000-319 ZB 220-007, re Frankham. All those in favor? That is carried. Confirmatory bylaw, mover and seconder, please. Councillor Moore, Councillor Ma that bylaw 220-84 to confirm and adopt the proceedings of council special meeting held on October 26, 220, listed herein be signed and sealed by the mayor and clerk. All those in favor? And it's carried. And finally, adjournment, mover and seconder, please. Councillor Cabral, Councillor Ma, at the special meeting of the Township of Springwater does now adjourn at 7.26 p.m. to meet again in regular meeting on November 4, 2.20, 6.30 p.m. All those in favor? Carry. Thank you and good night. Good night.